Hi, I welcome you all in my part 2 of Manual Design of Structure series. In my previous videos, I have discussed how to transfer the loads from slabs to beams and how to analyze and design the continuous beams using IS code. In this video, we will understand how the load is transferred to the columns. Before that, if you are new to my channel, please subscribe to it and press the bell icon so you can be notified on my regular uploads. So let's begin. As you can see, the framing plan of a building as shown. The column IDs have been marked. Using the similar plan, we have transferred the loads and designed the continuous beam in my previous video. So in this video, we will try to estimate the column loads and also compare the results from ETEPS software. So in order to estimate the loads on column using tributary area method, so we need to divide the column grids into two parts along x-axis as well as along y-axis. So this is how it is done. So these imaginary lines have been drawn between two column lines. Similarly, we will draw these lines along y-axis. Once we have drawn this line, now we will categorize the slabs. For example, as you can see this blue shaded area, that which indicates that the loads coming on this slab are trans transferred on this column. Similarly, if you look at this column, so this column is surrounded by this boundary, this region. So that means the load coming on this slab is to be carried out by this column. Similarly, the load transferred by this portion is to be carried by column number 3. In this way, you have to divide the portion of slab areas corresponding to the columns. Once you categorize the transfer of loads from portion of slabs to the particular column, now we need to understand what sort of loads are to be transferred. So, the loads acting on column will be self weight of the slab, self weight of the beam, that means the beams connected to those columns, self weight of column, weight of column itself, dead load on slab and live load on slab. So in order to compute the loads, first we need to name the areas. So let's name the areas to ease our calculations. So this is A1 and the area of A1 is 6 multiplied by 7 because half of 12 is 6 and half of 14 is 7. So the area of this blue shaded region is 42 feet square. Similarly, the area of this region is 6 plus 6, it's 12 and 7. That means 12 multiplied by 7 is 84 feet square. In similar way, we have calculated the areas of all other slabs which are shown in this plan. Once we have computed area, now we need to estimate the loads which are acting on column. And we know that formula is density multiplied by volume. To calculate the self weight of slab, we need to multiply density with thickness and the answer will be given. And the answer will be in pounds per square feet. If you multiply area with this figure, you will be getting the total load. Similarly, to compute the self weight of beam connected to column, we have to multiply width, height or depth, the length of the beam and density of the concrete. If you observe that the length of beam is highlighted in a different color, which indicates that in order to transfer the loads of beams on that particular column, we need to divide the beam into two portions. For example, the load of this beam is to be carried out by these two columns. So that's why we need to divide this length into two parts. So half of the load is to be taken by this column and the half of the load is to be taken by the other column. And then we have got that load up on slab and finally the live load on the slab. Now let's go to the Excel sheet in order to understand the calculations. So first you need to write down the column IDs. For example, this is C1, C2, C3, C4 and so on. After then, the area which is to be supported by that particular column. So for example, C1 has to carry the load of this portion. Similarly, C2 has to carry the load of A2. You need to write down the areas accordingly. And just now we have calculated the values of the shaded areas. Just write down the values in this column and we know that the density of concrete is pound per feet cube. After that, that load, that means the load of finishes on the slab, we have assumed 30 pounds per feet square. Similarly, the live load for residential area is to be taken as 40 pounds per feet square. 
Now, this is the key part beam length connected to x and y directions. For example, if you can see, two beams are connected to this column. So that means half of the load from this portion and half of the load from this portion is to be carried by C1. Total length of the beam is 12. So half of 12 is 6. Similarly, total length of beam from y axis is 14. So half of the 14 is 7. So 7 plus 6 is 30. Now look at the column 2. Three beams are connected here. So half of the load on left hand side and half of the load on right hand side. So it becomes 12. And along y axis it is 14. So half of the 14 is 7. So 12 plus 7 is 19. In similar way we have computed the length of the beams. Because once you know the length of the beams then the total load of beam is easy to calculate. Then column load. Column load is very easy to calculate. Because we just need to multiply the volume with density and it will give you the total loads and column load will be same because height of the building is same and the cross sections used in our plan is same as well. Similarly beam length. So beam length we have computed. Now we need to compute beam load. So beam load is width of the beam, depth of the beam multiplied by density. So this will give you the value in pound per fit. So if you multiply this value with length, so this will give you the total load of beam which is coming on the call, that particular call. After that, we have got self weight of slab. So self weight of slab, we do volume of slab multiplied by density. So area of the slab is 42 multiplied by 0 0.5, which is thickness of the slab. And 150 is the density of the concrete. So it becomes the slab self weight. In similar way, you just need to drag and automatically the other values will be calculated and the load of finishes that means area which is in fit square and that load which is 30 that value is also in fit square so when you multiply these two values fit square gets cancelled and the remaining value will be the value of load and similarly you need to compute the value of other columns now finally we have got the live load and live load is also calculated in the same way the way we have calculated the load of finishes that means area multiplied by imposed load and it will give you the value of live load once you have calculated all the loads now we need to sum the loads that means the column load beam load self weight of slab load of finishes slab live load and it will give you the value of 8865 pounds so in order to convert into kips just divide this value by 1000 so this will give you the value of kips and this is how the total load which is coming on column the total load which is coming on column c1 is 8.865 similarly we need to compute the load on other columns now let's solve the same structure on e depth so in order to shorten the video time i've already modeled this structure so let's check the loads applied on slabs so we have got 30 PSF of super dead load applied on slab. Similarly, 40 PSF of live load is applied. And let's verify the frame sections. So the dimensions for the beam sections are considered as 6 by 12. And the dimensions for column sections are considered as 12 by 12. Let's look at the load combinations. So I've created four load combinations just to verify the response on each load case. So if there is any mistake in calculation, so we can easily figure out under which load case the mistake is to be corrected. So click OK, run the analysis. So the analysis is done. Now check the base reactions. So I'm selecting combination and the total load and reaction is FZ. Click OK. Switch the structure into plan mode. Now as you can see, the base reactions have been calculated and I have tabulated these values in Excel. You can also compare. Now for C1, the manual response is 8.865 kips. And the calculation from E tab is 7.672. Similarly, for column 2 is 15.405. And 
from E tabs it is 14.869 we are getting the near values now let's check another column for example this column which is C6 is C6 in our case so for C6 it's 26.29 E tabs has calculated as 28.725 so if you see we are getting the similar values now in order to check the total weight of building we need to sum the base reactions of all the columns and that is and once you sum the base reactions of all columns the total value is 216.24 kips and if you sum the response of base reactions computed from e tabs is 214 kips and the percentage error is 0.83 so that means we are getting approximately the similar values by hand calculations since tributary area method is the approximate method obviously for accurate calculations we need to take help from the softwares but in order to check whether the softwares are working fine to also verify the calculations manually for smaller structures which i have shown to you we don't really use software because the manual calculations becomes handy for smaller projects but it is recommended to always check the response coming from software from your manual calculations if you are getting error within one or two percent that means your results are okay otherwise you need to again revise your model or revise your calculations if you find this tutorial useful please do like and share and if you have any doubt please write in a comment section for more updates please subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon so you can be notified on my regular uploads thank you and have a nice day